Hey, good afternoon. I am here with Richard Ellis, Executive Director of My 529, Utah's 529 College Savings Plan, the best 529 college savings plan in the nation. And I'm Richard Ellis, and I'm here today with David Damshin, who's the Utah State Treasurer. Um, David and I, we go back 25 years working together, so it's really fun for us to have this opportunity today for Utah Saves Week to talk about savings. So Richard, today is the last day of Utah Saves Week 2021. Today's theme focuses on saving as a family. That can mean many things. As a family, you can identify all kinds of important things you might save for, like a vacation, an RV, a horse, a home, or even education for either the children or the parents. So how can getting an education help a family? Why is it important? You know, I think we all know that education is really the key to lifting ourselves to a different standard of living. Um, and when we think education, we've got to think beyond just, I've got to go to a research university, the University of Utah is where I need to be. Education can be skills training, it can be apprenticeship course, it can be the technical colleges, it can be junior college, community college. Anything you do to enhance your education and your skills better prepares you for the future. We've all seen the studies that better educated people make more money over their lifetime. And that's what we want to help people do. It's really important that people know, if they, if they don't know already, My529, Utah's 529 College Savings Plan is rated gold by Morningstar. That's the best you can possibly be. And that has to do with the quality of the investments and the investment performance, but also the fee structure and customer service and a bunch of other things, right, Richard? That's right. You know, Morningstar rates 60, 63 out of a little over 90 college savings plans in the country. There are only three plans in the country that have a gold rating, and we're fortunate to be one of them. And the only plan that has a gold rating for the past 10 years, 10 consecutive years. Um, so that's meaningful. And they look at us really on four pillars. They look at our, our process of how we do things. They look at our oversight, our, our governance structure. They look at our performance and they look at the pricing, the fees we have. And we come out on top in all of those areas. You know, it's something to be proud of as a state that we, we built this thing up uh, over the course of the last 25 years. Uh, not just something to be proud of though, something that Utah families should not only know about, but take advantage of. and. As I mentioned, uh, we're celebrating the 25th anniversary this year of My 529. Is that right? So tell me a little bit about the beginning of My 529, and you were actually involved in that back in the day. Uh, yeah, it's really interesting to, to think we're 25 years down the road. Uh, at the time, it was Utah Educational Savings Plan, but I'll refer to it as My 529. It came into existence on July 1st of 1996. And in a special session of the spring of 1996, Representative Doug Peterson, who was young, he was in his late 20s when he was elected, uh, had used this as an idea in a college class, and then he put it into legislation at the same time we were seeing a movement national, and he got this legislation passed. So back in 1996, it all got started, and I actually went to work in the state treasurer's office as the chief deputy state treasurer in September of 1996. And our legacy investment option was the Public Treasures Investment Fund. And then in late 97, 98, we decided let's expand this into equities and to bond funds. And so we, we opened accounts with Vanguard and we managed all the investments out of the state treasurer's office during those years. Um, you know, and we used to wonder, can this fund ever get to be 300 million or $500 million? Well, it got there in a hurry, became more work than we could handle in the treasurer's office. And so we pushed it down to um, my 529, which is part of the what's now the Utah Board of Higher Education, but was the Board of Regents. Um, and it's been a phenomenal success. Today, we're $18.7 billion, over 450,000 accounts from across the country. So it really has been uh, more successful than anybody ever thought it would be. That's a lot of families looking to the future and providing for the education of, of their children. That's incredible. Uh, that kind of growth in 25 years time, that is amazing. So for, uh, let's, let's boil things down to the level of the typical Utah family. What advice do you have for families 
uh, who want to save for education, who want to take advantage of My 529. You know, a lot of people say it's too late to get started. Um, I've got six boys. My first two boys, I didn't have an account for. I opened them for my next four, but three of those four were already 15, 16 years old. And so, you know, there wasn't a lot of time to save. Um, the key is to start early. You know, when, when you have that, that child born, one of the first things you got to do is open that educational savings account and start putting together, you know, $25 a month or $50 a month. Um, I wish I'd have done that for my kids. And, but you have to have the mindset that I'm probably not going to save enough to pay for four years of college at the University of Utah. Um, maybe I save enough over 18 years that I can pay for one year or a year and a half or whatever that cost might be and be satisfied with that because there'll be Pell Grants, there can be student loans, working while the, you know, the child's going to school. There's a lot of other options. But if I can save money, that's one less dollar I have to borrow and then repay with interest on top of it. You mentioned that it's, it's not too late, it's never too late. I heard a great quote last week that um, I have to share. Maybe you've heard it. The best time to plant a tree is 20 years ago. The second best time to plant a tree is today. And I Boy, thought that kind of says it all, you know. College yeah. savings is just the same, just get started. Yeah, absolutely. And I know I called you for help on this situation. Um, my wife and I are going to be grandparents for the first time in May. And I called you and said, I don't even know this child's name yet. Can I open a 529 account? What did you tell me? Well, the challenge is you can't open it for the child themselves because we have to have a, a social security number associated with the beneficiary. But you can open the account, list yourself as the beneficiary, or list your child as the beneficiary. And then when the child's born and gets a social security number, you transfer that account so that that new grandchild in your case becomes a beneficiary. No reason not to be doing that if you can plan ahead that way. Yep. <laughs> and we took your advice and we're saving automatically every month. Um, and thanks to you and, and your team and the great work that you do, I know that that money's gonna grow. It's going to turn into real money and it's going to make a big difference in that little boy's life when he becomes not so little <laughs> uh, right now he's not even born yet but we're saving <laughs> so um you know i'm a huge supporter of 529 plans and um, um we hit on a few key topics so <clears throat> Tell us a little bit more about 529 plans for people that don't understand like how they work. How do you set one up? You know, I wish when somebody said 529, you thought just like a 401k that we all have for retirement plans. Um, think of a 529 really more like a Roth IRA, similar to a 401k, but a little different because the contribution you make is after tax. So you don't get a tax benefit with the contribution you make to the account, but you get it afterwards. Um, the money grows in that account tax deferred. So you're not paying any taxes on the, the capital gains and the, the dividends received over time. Um, and then when you withdraw that money and you use it for a qualified higher education expense, um, you never have to pay taxes on the money. So that's just a great advantage. One way to grow savings uh, without a lot of extra effort. Um, you know, but like we say, so many people aren't aware of what my 529 counts are. Uh, but those tax benefits are a great way. If you're a Utah resident, we also have a state tax credit that you can get if your beneficiary is under the age of 19 when you open the account and it really carries on throughout the rest of their life. You can get at the, the current time, it's a 4.95% credit for contributions to a 529 account. So it's really a great way to be saving money and trying to save on your tax bill. So what happens if you set aside all this money and then that child doesn't go to college or doesn't go to technical school, doesn't need that money for educational purposes? You know, we get that question all the time and that's a real concern with people. Uh, they wonder, you know, what do I do? I don't know. The kids, you know, not even a year old. I don't know if they're going to go to college or not. Uh, these plans, plans were designed to be really flexible. And so you, if the child chooses not to go, you can transfer that money to a member of the child's family. Now, member is pretty broad. It could be to a sibling. It could be to a cousin. 
Um, it could be to an aunt or an uncle, um, or you could take that money and just leave it in the account. You could transfer it to a grandchild, a child of that um, beneficiary that comes 20 years down the future. So there's a lot of opportunities. You know, worst case scenario is you withdraw the money. Now there are penalties, taxes and penalties. Uh, you would have to recognize on the gain in that account, you'd have to pay regular income tax plus a 10% penalty. But think, what if I had $20,000 in that account? Um, say half of it came from earnings over the life of the account. So it's $10,000 I have to pay tax on. Well, 10% penalty is $1,000. My income tax rate, 15, 20%, another 1,500. So yeah, I got to pay something, but I still come out ahead with more money. So worst case scenario, you still come out all right. But the opportunity to be able to transfer that to other beneficiaries is a great way. To, to keep that money active and, and to benefit somebody's life. You could use that money to help that child make a down payment on their, on their first home. Uh, or you could take a really nice vacation. Absolutely. You're going to pay a little <laughs> penalty, but it's money that's there. You know, I had a couple of my boys' accounts that had money left over at the end of it. And so I transferred that money into my grandchildren's account. So, you know, it's all worked out just fine and will make a difference in somebody's life somewhere. Well, Richard, I appreciate you taking the time to get with us to talk about uh, My529 and what a powerful way it is to save for your children's future and their education. I just want to mention quickly, even if your family savings goals are more immediate uh, than college savings or for any other purpose, uh, check out the resources at utahsaves.org. And thanks for setting such a great example um, for us with, with what you've done, Richard, and for the great work that you and your team um, are doing every day to make uh, education a reality for Utah families. David, thank you. It's been great to be with you today and talk about something great like educational savings. Thanks, Richard.